What is good? We're back with a little remoter, a little little commuter pod here. <laughs> Ooh, we just <laughs> gotta play it safe, there. kids. Gotta play it safe. Well done. Well, we just finished up a mock draft with the Patreon crew. Been pretty hot and heavy on the mocking it up before we fuck it up over there. It's um, almost too much mocking. No, no, it's just, just kidding. No way. Um, so, you know, sort of have a pretty good feeling where people fall and where people go. And, uh, you know, especially with our little community. And obviously all drafts are a little different or on a little bit of a sliding scale. But this one definitely got tilted at the QB position a little bit. So we wanted to hop on and talk about it for a minute. Thought it was a good example of, you know, having to be flexible, but also maybe not being necessarily bullied by the board if you will um and then you know and we got we're a little staunchly bit. sticking to your plan regardless of how it unfolds there well, no. i mean nobody did that that's what you did um no that's not that's not what i did at all okay um, but before we get started you got to make sure to subscribe like five star review comment below all those good things you can go to revelrybrewingco.com and get a t-shirt uh for to support your crew support your guys uh if you don't want to do uh any of the patreon stuff monetarily the the t-shirt would be great or you could do the free stuff subscribe like comment all that other stuff all greatly helps us out so we very much appreciate it so we're gonna hop back in here we we, like i said did a little mock draft we did we went 18 rounds in this one um and like i said wanted to hop on here with a little bit of discussion about what to do when the board starts going in a different direction that you're typically going in we're doing a super flex tight end premium here so this was the quarterback position that starts to slide and and get you get get a little tilted here um and really like for for the first two rounds you know pretty standard fare for what's kind of going on third turn at the turn on three you get stafford again very very standard issue kind of stuff there and then you know we we pick up halfway into the third here and and um jay wayne drafts Derek carr because he was feeling a little uh worried there uh because of some choices that he made but really what what maybe the, the rascal or the culprit of really turning this draft kind of on its head a bit and then made some other people uh maybe follow suit uh and take quarterbacks a lot earlier than we had been seeing them go uh was our guy zach over here and he went mahomes lawrence barkley cousins in the fourth hawkinson elliott zach wilson wentz uh daniel jones uh that was the seventh eighth and ninth round um and then he comes back and takes baker in the 13th so a lot of quarterbacks off the board right there um and then like i said that maybe caused a couple other people uh as we got further down the draft to maybe really, really elevate some quarterbacks that we've typically seen go, you know, three, four rounds different from what we saw there, as well as some other quarterbacks just get maybe getting elevated, you know, a round or two. Um, So, you know, we can pick up with Jay Wayne there in the third and and get what your kind of thought process was before we jump uh, to, you know, kind of mostly jumping on my side of things and seeing uh, what kind of I was thinking in the missteps uh, that I made along the way. Yeah. So real quick, you know, I, I had the one seven spot and I thought for sure I'd get a top six quarterback with that pick. I thought somebody would take chase Taylor or Jefferson in one of those first six spots. And when that didn't happen, I was like, ah, I didn't know what to do. I, I, I didn't know Deshaun was going to fall to me at two six and whether I would want to even make that pick or not. Uh, so I went with Jonathan Taylor and then Deshaun sitting there looking me in the face and I didn't, I don't know what to do. I got, I got, I got Clemson, uh, blood in me. I can't help myself. And I was like, well, let me see, let me take Deshaun and see if I can make the rest of this draft work with taking Deshaun that early because next year coming into this league, I'm going to be ecstatic to have Deshaun Watson coming back to my team. I, I am planning to basically not have him for a whole year. Uh, so, and, and then when Deshaun was there, I wish that I would have probably taken a, a, a wide receiver with that first pick because I do feel like I might be wasting this year a little bit and I'm wasting one of Jonathan Taylor's prime years, but he'll still be a young stud, probably not going to fall anywhere in value next year. Um, so I, I still feel okay with that, but you know, I, I was like, uh, I feel better about taking Deshaun if I had taken one of those wide receivers. But then when that third pick comes around, you know, all those other good quarterbacks are gone and there's basically three left that I that I'm into taking that I now need as my QB one for twenty twenty two and it's it's Carr, it's Tua Tungavailoa and Justin Fields. And I st- 
man, depending on the day you ask me, I, I'm flipping on which one of those guys I want, but I think I still feel safest and best about Derek Carr. In he, ahead of me, looking at this draft board, one, two, three of the teams don't have a single quarterback, and then one of the other teams has one. So I don't think that there's going to be any of those top three quarterbacks left that I want come back to me, which it's a mock, so I probably should have just taken who I wanted non, non-quarterback-wise, which happened to be DK Metcalf. I was almost, almost going to take DK Metcalf, who fell to me at 4-6, and when that happened, I felt even better about taking Derek Carr. But, like, I forced it, and I reached, and I took Derek Carr, and you commented on it. I, I actually commented it on the chat. I was like, I didn't know what to do there after taking Deshaun Watson with my second pick. I felt like I needed to take a quarterback, but I don't know I did the right thing. And then you were like, yikes. And then you and I started talking about why I kind of took Derek Carr, which – you know, we probably shouldn't have done that. We should have waited until the round played out. And I don't know well, if in, that in a real some... draft, I would never do that. I hate right. when anybody talks about what's going on in the right. draft. It, I know some people are like, well, that's strategy. If you're playing for big money, that's shut bullshit. Shut the fuck up. Right. right. You cannot talk about the draft. Can't be like, you got to take a quarterback here, man. Look at all the guns you're left. It's right. just being a little bit. Shut up and wait your turn. Right. You can't do that shit. You can't talk about it. But, you know, we're in the cheap, Patreon. Cheap money with league with your buddies. Do your thing. Expensive league. Shut your mouth. So, so I reached and took Derek Carr probably sooner than I've I've ever seen him go, and I, at first I didn't like it, and then when DK Once fell you got to DLF me, DLF ADP, then right, right, uh, they did elevate quarterbacks a lot, and then in this draft, you know, they were going off early, hot and heavy, and 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 once Stafford is gone, it's like a real bummer because you need, if you need a quarterback one, you have to reach, and 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 then I decided I was like I'm going to be playing catch up this whole this whole this whole draft after having taken Deshaun. So let me go ahead and knock out and get my favorite quarterback left. And then maybe that'll keep prevent me from having to chase quarterback the rest of this draft. So Derek Carr will be my QB one for this year, which I feel okay about. And then next year he'll be me. He'll be my QB two and that'll be fantastic. Uh, So I was trying to see if I could stay competitive this year, but, but as you can see throughout this draft, I did try to keep it fairly young just in case it didn't work out for me this year. I still feel good and in good position coming into next year, getting Deshaun a, t- a potential top five with QB one upside overall uh, coming on on my team. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, we talked about it. It's a mock. We're mocking with our Patreon people, whether you agree or disagree with our stance for, from previous about talking about it, we're talking about it. And then he, he actually does take car there, which previous to him taking car here like there is no real squeeze on quarterbacks really like for the most part through this area that's typically about who we see go off the board now we're talking about it now he takes it now it seems like definitely the squeeze gets on and maybe uh you know jason kind of triggered part of the early quarterback squeeze and you know maybe uh, Zach's philosophy the whole time was like, I'm going to go quarterback heavy, which, you know, I don't this I'm fine with that. If it's if it's done right, I just don't necessarily agree with maybe the uh, value that you got on some of these guys to make it worth it. Um, so you take Carr and then Fields, Rogers and Tua all fall off. Like you said, you got DK there, which is who you were going to take anyway. So, you know, basically kind of works out for you for the most part. Carr in these drafts has either been, you know, a full round or maybe even a round and a half uh, where he usually starts coming off the board. And it's, you know, maybe Fields goes before him and then him and Tua, uh, Carr and Tua kind of jockey back and forth seemingly. Uh, depending on who's picking and and Rogers filters in there at some point. So, you know, nothing nothing too crazy. I'm not going to get, you know, talk shit to you in the draft and be like, "Eesh." You know, that that was pretty early from what we've been seeing, but you know, like you said you got Deshaun. So, uh, but then, you know, you get in the 4th round here and there goes Kirk Cousins and this is this is the the other team that maybe then, you know, Carr went a little early. Now we're seeing, you know, then two of Fields and Rodgers, that avalanche goes downhill. That they're all off the board like you said, probably regarded as like that last here. stand of quarterbacks there. Which I don't really want to take Rodgers, but you know, we we did a longer version of this show over on Patreon. So if you if you want to get more details into more of this draft, then that's where you need to go for some extra content. But uh, you know, probably not I don't I wasn't even thinking about Rodgers when I was thinking about which of my favorite yeah. quarterbacks are left here, you know? Yeah. So then cousin goes off at four eleven. So, you know, at this point in the draft, like I'm not I'm not sweating anything that has gone down. I'm like, all right, I got I got Kyler. Um, 
you know, I got two good running backs. Um, and, you know, on the way out of, of the fourth round, I wasn't thinking anywhere near Cousins. Who the hell is? I certainly wasn't. Uh, but he goes Cousins, and that that's his third quarterback. So he's got Mahomes and Lawrence, which is like, eesh. That's that. That's a yikes for me. Uh, right, because you're never going to move up in value with Kirk Cousins, you know? Right. You know, I, I'm down with taking Cousins in the sixth, seventh, eighth round. And um, keeping to, him to be for your, points on your team for a while. But you're not going to trade him for better value, you know? Right. Well, that's kind of the overlying theme for me throughout, you know, most of the rest of his quarterback picks is like, I like the theory. And, you know, shout out to my man, Zach. Great guy. Been OG with us and always... You know, keeps it interesting, keeps it spicy, good commentary. Uh, so, you know, we're mocking it up here and we're this is just a good example of, of things to talk about. Um, and like you said, Cousins is you're probably not going to get any return on value on that trade. Uh, if that's the idea behind what you're trying to pull off here, you're going to have to probably move Lawrence or Mahomes, which, you know, you're probably not going to want to do if Lawrence is doing his thing. Now, I can understand saying, hey, I'm safeguarding myself with the Lawrence because we're not 100 percent sure, but it's too early to safeguard yourself with Kirk and Lawrence. I'm fine with Kirk being my third quarterback with on that team in the seventh round. Don't right. love Kirk being my, that quarterback on the team in the fourth round. Right. Um, so then, you know, that, that I think starts another slippery slope. All of a sudden, I think everybody's safe school, that is Kirk Cousins, um, you know, is off the board, which is certainly mine. That's like if I missed all my quarterbacks, that can be my, that's my default second quarterback because people love to hate, but that's a good QB too. Um, and now this offense is supposed to get a little more pass happy and, and maybe you even get another step up from Cousins. Um, so then Mac Jones goes at 5-3, which is early for, for drafts that we've been doing. You know, and I'm, there's, you know, I didn't have a chance to take a quarterback at that point going back through after Cousins went off, but I wouldn't have taken Mac Jones there. Um, at, and the, then, at your 5-6, you wouldn't have taken Mac? No, probably not. Um, I could didn't see, have the chance I could to. see where I could, I could make that. I could I could reach a little bit for Mac Jones, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's not I, great. I, it's, it's not. I'm it's not. not I'm not worst. saying that that no, that's dumb. Yikes, blah blah blah. But I'm just saying, like for me personally, I'm, m in most cases, yikes. I'm probably not looking at that. Uh, but I, I'm not. I'm not vehemently disagreeing with that pick in the fifth round. You saw Kirk go off. Maybe he's the new Kirk with a little more upside. Um, don't love the outcome that's possible for this year but i i like mac i think max you know just fine um but that was that was his second quarterback so then we go through this whole thing that that, that whole next round and i'm like all right mac jones is off the board I'm, i come back around then tommy goes off the board which you know maybe a hair early from what we've been seeing and in this situation um you know i don't think i would have been considering tommy going off the board with those two with mac and and Kirk off the board, I'm probably just going to skip the one year of Tom Brady and maybe you get the bonus second year. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a big, big if. And, like, uh, it's a big I'm commitment. kind of viewing it like Aaron Rodgers. Like, I'm just not taking Tom Brady in a super flex startup because someone else is going to take him before I feel comfortable to take him. Like, he's got to go several rounds after the sixth for me to even right. think about it. Like, I am not wasting a dynasty sixth-round pick on a guy who's going to probably only play one year. I can't do it. Maybe two, maybe you get two, maybe it's two, but still, I mean, it's, 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 it's not that fun when there's so many other players on the board, but you know, I could, if, if I felt really good about the start of my team, I could maybe justify it and say, Hey, he's giving me a shot to win because all the rest of the quarterbacks are gone. Um, and it's going to give me a two year window to, you know, figure out who my QB two and three are going to be, uh, from, from here on out. Uh, that's, that's going to be my main focus. Uh, but you know, as we keep going, um, we go through that round, then we're going back through the sixth round with Tom Brady. I take Terry McLaurin there. You take Antonio Gibson, and then Ryan Tannehill goes off the board, which, you know, when all else fails in the 10th tenth, tenth round, if I really needed a quarterback, that would be an, another fail-safe guy for me. Like, hey, you know, you might not love him, but QB2-wise, he's had some really prolific seasons, and last season, you know, took a little step back, but still Missing serviceable a lot of enough weapons. for me. Right. Still serviceable enough for me if I'm hurting and I really need it. So there goes another guy that you would take. But I'm, there's no way that I'm looking at Mac Jones or uh, Ryan Tannehill in the sixth round there. It's not happening. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe I start to say, all right, a lot of these guys are gone. And maybe I could start to consider a Zach Wilson. But I don't really want Zach Wilson. I like the tools around him to succeed. But in the sixth round, I'm still stabbing on guys that I feel really good about. 
Um, so probably not, but you know, so then that, that round comes back around, goes through Tannehill goes off the board. We're now we're in the seventh. Zach Wilson goes off the board at seven, two. Now I'm starting to panic a little bit. I'm like, shit, well, this really is drying up. And, but I, I can't really take any other quarterback that's on the board right now besides Matt Ryan, when it got to that picket and which is seven, six, which I took Dalton Schultz. We're playing tight end premium. I really like to get a tight end who I think is going to get a decent amount of targets. I think they're very valuable when when in the tight end pr- premium situation, uh, when the tight end is going to get a decent amount of targets, that's really going to elevate his, his ceiling and really going to put him up there with some of the top receivers uh, in the league. We've we've had this discussion many times with why we were so hot and heavy on Waller, because when he was putting up his big numbers and the the amount of volume that he was getting, he was right up there with Devontae Adams. When Kelsey's been putting up his numbers, he's right up in there with all the top wide receivers. Mark Andrews last year, right up in there with all those top wide receivers because of the volume that he gets in the 1.5 uh, per reception. So, you know, I'm always looking for Schultz or Goddard to be my last one. So I got to that point and I could have taken Matt Ryan there instead of him and still gotten Dallas Goddard. You know, we're YOLOing it here. Hindsight's 2020. You don't know what's going to happen. Dalton Goddard could have been the next pick off the board. She could have went Schultz Goddard right after I took Matt Ryan there. Um, or right after I took Schultz there, it could have been Goddard. Is somebody saying, oh, shit, there's uh, Goddard's the last one I want too." you know? Yeah. Um, and I almost took Goddard, but Mitchell was like the last running back that I felt comfortable taking. So that's why I went Mitchell over right. Goddard. But I almost I was about to take Goddard. So if you give me a chance there and say you could sub Schultz out for for and get Ryan and put Goddard in my next slot at eight, I would be fine with that. But you don't fucking know that that's about to happen. So after I pick Schultz, Ryan is absolutely on my radar. I'm like, all right, when it comes back around, you got to put the blinders on and you got to take Matt Ryan here. Matt Ryan, Kenny Pickett goes off the board at 7 and then Matt Ryan goes off the board at 8 1. So now you're sitting here like, damn, fuck, this, this sucks. Like, all right, ah, we're, uh, uh, we're, 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 uh, we're, 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 we're up against the wall here. There's not a whole lot of fun left to go on, but now we're getting into the position like, all right, well, there's not that many quarterbacks really left that I want. I, you know, Cousins or uh, Wentz and, and Daniel Jones, guys in these drafts typically hang 12th, 13th, maybe even 14th round sometimes. Um, so I'm thinking, all right, worst case scenario, I'll get one of those and then I'll, you know, I'll take some stabs on whoever. I also like Davis Mills. I've been drafting him a lot in the late 10th, 11th in these drafts, mid 10th, you know, just saying, hey, this is my QB three. Um, I liked what I saw from him at the end of the year. He was pretty decent, had a stinker or two, but was really coming around on an on a absolutely garbage team. Um, and they're going to give him another go around. And if he doesn't quite hit it, I think, and, and they and they end up being a bad team, could they draft a new quarterback? Definitely, maybe. Um, but I think he'll get a second chance. I think he'll be good enough this year to, to you know, and if I'm drafting Mills in this position, I'm not saying, hey, my quarterback two position is set forever. I'm drafting him for you know, what could be potential upswing if he becomes a starting quarterback in the league for a while and shows it'd be good or as a bridge. Um, so, you know, we get Wentz and, and Daniel Jones then go in this eighth and ninth round. And if you're telling me I could have Carson Wentz instead of Sky Moore, I'm probably taking Sky Moore. Um, if you're telling me I could have Sky Moore or Daniel Jones, I'm probably taking Sky Moore. Um, so both of those guys go and now I'm gutted. Now I'm like, fuck. And this is probably my first big misstep right here of not just biting the bullet and taking Davis Mills at nine, six. This is the first time where I'm saying, all right, you don't hate a guy here. The value's not that far off. I've seen Mills get traded for a first round pick in super flex drafts. Um, you know, it's, it's not terribly far off. And I ended up taking Jahan Dotson here, uh, which in the realm of trading and super flex right now, that would, that, that would be a possibility. Um, so I would say that is my first big misstep of saying, Hey, you should have just got one right there. All the other ones, what the hell are you going to do? You know, you got a fucking, you got some tough guy over here drafting all the fucking quarterbacks thinking he's hot shit. And you know, I'm not going to get bullied. I'm not going to get bullied. You know, you said I'm going home with my fucking shoes on. I can you tell you that. You don't hate the theory. Of, of what, you know, Scratch did there, but, you know, Big Co brought this up on, I think it was a Patreon show, 
where it's you know he because he loves the trade and loves the corner market and, and and come out of there knowing that you're gonna have to wheel and deal a little bit and try and elevate some value in quarterbacks which you know zach wilson and baker mayfield for for zach are probably the two that that, that are gonna elevate it almost feels like no matter what Wentz and danny dimes do no one's gonna like them same thing with kirk cousins uh but 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 one thing you need to be aware of when you start drafting that many quarterbacks, especially the ones you did, like people know you need to trade them. So you lose a little bit of leverage when people know that you need to move them for other skill position players, right. primarily exactly. like wide receivers and potentially a, a, a running back next year. You know, who knows? So right. – y- I like the I like the idea of the strategy, but I don't know that he executed it with the players that he took and right. as many that he took. So right. you could you could have you, you could have maybe even just stopped at Cousins. Like Wilson's the guy who you could punch up with, who there could be an increase in value, and there would be at least a fraction of the community that would say, "We always love Zach Wilson. I told you so." Tony Romo said he was next to Aaron Rodgers, like. You know, so I think there's a there's at least that there. Carson Wentz and Daniel Jones have had their time in the sun, and even if they do play well this year, like you said, the, the value elevation is not going to be there. So what you're taking in the seventh, eighth, ninth, maybe even the tenth round, the guys that you're getting, you you would almost never trade. Maybe the tenth round. Once you get into the tenth round, maybe then you could say, you know, because of some questionable picks in that round. Um, that you could say that, hey, maybe I would trade straight up for Wentz or Daniel Jones there. But I mean, there's probably a, not a stretch in the season where I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm going to I need the quarterback so bad. So I'm going to give you Sky Moore for Wentz or I need a quarterback so bad. I'm going to give you John Dotson for Wentz. Like it's probably not going to happen. And I know that probably nobody else, if you haven't traded him by then, like nobody else is giving you the value on those guys either, which is going to be hard to find. So I think that's a really good point. Uh, there you know the strategy is good but you got to take two to tango and and like you said the rest of the league kind of knows where you're at too Um, right because you know the first wide receiver you take is nuke with who's 30 with a six game suspension Um, right you know right so and 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 good picks there with cooks and myers but man you know those are your wide receiver one and two for a while that's not that's not as fun um so you took dots and you passed on mills i'm up i still need a qb2 uh, for my 2022, Mills is the bummer of the, of the of the draft for sure for me. Missed and that. and so I, I had Mills and Winston, and and I was like, I I don't need to take. And I, and I was thinking about golf. I was like, I don't need to take these guys yet. Let's. Then I decided to let's. It's a mock. Let's see if the, if any of them fall back to me. And I took my favorite skill position player left on the board. You know, I, I, if you want to take James Cook, I guess for the fun of it. I, I'm not going to be too mad, but Claypool in the ninth round, I just can't help myself. I feel like I have Claypool in every single one of these mocks. So I'm just like, oh, yeah. Let me get, you look, you click on him, and he'm like 23, 6'4", 238, yeah. and you remember the four-touchdown game, and you're just like, oh, yeah, I'll take that guy because he's got so much longer to figure it out, and that's kind of the build of this team in general, and, and he still could be good. So I'm like, I take him, and then boom, there goes Davis Mills. I'm like, ah, that, that, that was a good pick there, TJ. And then, you know, Winston comes off the board and then it comes back to me and I'm like man if I don't take golf I don't want to just let Casey get him and save Casey's mock here and I still need a quarterback too so I felt like that was almost a little bit of a reach but I took him so that you couldn't have him basically and I still needed him and I felt great I was like yep golf there it is boom and then so what are you thinking when golf and Winston and Mills come off the board and now you're up at 10-7 once I saw Mills go, then I then I was like, well, damn, that was definitely the misstep. And you know, I'm thinking at ten seven there, if if golf comes back to me, I'll definitely take golf. Um, you could you could kind of put Mills and golf into maybe a similar situation of saying that you know they they might be looking for a job after this year, but I think they could all they're both of them will be bridges probably do another quarterback and get get a second chance. So I'm fine with that, especially it feels this like late. If the Lions replace Goff next year, he'll he should still he could bounce around like Ryan Fitzpatrick bounced mm-hmm. around being bridge starters for teams and still being QB2 3 value for you on your Superflex team. So I know I have a QB2 now for this year without Deshaun, but then I still have a decent well, ish asset that that maybe no one wants or ever was going to care about but will be valuable on my team moving forward right and i the reason i would like mills is just because there's a lot less there's more unknown and there's more less probability of being able to go up and and him his value go up and you know be able to even package him in a trade because you know you gotta you almost need the quarterback to go make a play on a quarterback right um so 
you know, Miss Mills, you take golf right in front of me. Golf goes, Winston goes before golf. Um, and then, it, you know, no quarterbacks there for a minute. Um, so, you know, I grabbed Cole Komet because I, I definitely want the wide receiver too for the, for the Bears. I, I like what, what Cole's doing right now um, and where you can get him. And then we're coming back through the 11th here, and I'm thinking, all right, well, you know, I can get Ritter and Mariota through, through this draft without much resistance from here on out. Well, then Ritter goes at 2-5, and I'm like, well, fuck it. I should I probably should take Mayfield here because maybe he ends up somewhere and, and, and plays this week, this this year. And, and Mayfield would be one of those guys, as well as Daniel Jones, that I would take late because I do think that there could be I like the value that you get on those guys. And May, Baker's basically in the spot where Wentz, uh, Danny Dimes would be and, and Mayfield's right there. I think Mayfield is still could be a nice QB, two for you. I think there's still some some good potential football ahead of them and at 13 now you're in a position where you know tyler algier palmer gage you know i like all of those guys madison gordon you know i like them all but you know i'm fine with taking the stab on the quarterback there and you know instead at in the 12th round i took malik willis as, as being a guy essentially that could be a piece in a trade to go get another quarterback. That That's the thinking of going after Willis there is like, is there's the most unknown. There's the most upside in the legs. Uh, you might be upset about the draft capital or whatever, but you know, at one point he was the, the one, 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 two. So, you know, I take him there as like, all right, well, uh, this is going to be a piece if and and then worst best case scenario something you know no no offense no ill will on Tannehill if something happens to Tannehill regardless if Willis is great or not he'll probably his legs will probably keep him with a decent floor um so you know take Willis there as a potential piece to try to go get a quarterback because I'm hurting and it's a mock and then I'm thinking all right well maybe I'll get Mayfield on the way back around Zach takes Mayfield. Uh, so now he's got like seven quarterbacks. Um, and that that was that was a, a pretty big bummer. I come back and I take Mariota, which is probably a little bit of a reach there. I don't really love that. Uh, but, you know, I, I think Mariota will hold off Ritter and, and there is a potential legs, you know, there that could be, you know, OK fantasy wise of, of giving you a couple points a game with potential some TD upside, maybe. Um, Until those legs fall off, but yeah. probably behind be behind a decent amount and having to throw to make up, um, and you know they do have some young fun weapons there. Um, so you know Mariota basically is is my my last hope, and then I'm like, all right, well maybe I can get Mitchell and and or a Garoppolo here uh, to you know round this thing out, and I you know kind of did want Mitchell. So the 14th round comes. I definitely make a misstep here. I love taking Marlon Mack. I love the value on Marlon Mack. I like what could be with Marlon Mack. And if you're looking at this, I would always take David Bell in front of Marlon Mack. I've taken David Bell in like every single one of these mocks. So I was like, well, let me just not take him and see where he falls. He ends up going the next pick. Be that as it may, like I don't, I don't mind taking the stab on Mitchell there, and you know maybe then even getting a Jimmy Garoppolo. But now I'm kind of doing the same thing as what Zach was doing up there, and and getting a whole bunch of guys who value is probably never really going to increase all that much. Mitchell, I think, probably has the best chance to maybe rise from the ashes like a phoenix. Um, no way, And he man. does have he has the leg upside where, you know, he, there is some athleticism there and he got the day ball treatment. And let's say he holds off picket for most of this year and, and doesn't look bad. He'll he's probably going to get another shot. Um, and, you know, so I would have I should have probably taken Mitchell there at 14 and then I would have felt OK going into the season of saying, all right, between Willis, Mariota and Mitchell, I could probably get a starter for a minute. And then between those three guys, maybe I could use my picks to trade uh, and try to find a quarterback as well as as this draft went on, I noted what was kind of going on and I kept my draft to be fairly on the young side of thing and fairly skewed towards wide receivers. That way, if, I'm like, fuck, this year's really getting out of hand because my second quarterback position isn't really going the way that I needed to go or I couldn't make anything happen. I'm still very much alive. I have young talent. I got the second tight end and tight end premium to move and commit. I got young receivers that I can move and maybe package them up with a pick to try to get a quarterback and or I could just try to get picks for the next year. And it's not it'd be I feel like it'd be pretty easy with the team I drafted to walk away with two to three first round picks moving into next year. Now you could say, well, the 2023 market is crazy. Like, be that as it may. 
I think once you get into the season and people start being like, oh, I could win right now, all of a sudden those things, those, those fingertips start to get a little greasy and they're, right. they're willing to, you know, unload some picks. For sure. And, and who knows what will happen in the college season. You could, you could have some injuries, you could have some poor play, you, could, you know, like all kind of things can happen. And, and not everyone is on Dynasty Twitter and right. knows that this 23 class is so highly regarded as everyone has them on Dynasty Twitter. So I feel like in your home leagues, when you're in the middle of that season, those picks are going to be up for grabs. So, um, and, 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 you know, you have you still have your first coming out of this thing. If, if, if it doesn't work out and you can't acquire more, you, you know, you're still probably going to have like a top seven-ish pick which they're supposed to be like six first round quarterbacks come out next year so you, you'll have a decent shot at a quarterback next year to kind of try and, and if solve I see it going QB that problems. way I'm going to be able to acquire more ammunition to be able to right you'll be able to move mix into a contender because he's not going to be dead after next year he's a really good dynasty right. asset for right and, now and so when if I took you want to win I didn't know where we were at as right. far as but from there on out it's fairly young outside of Terry McLaurin but I like McLaurin a good bit and still pretty young young right. and just got paid and right. and then you took kareem hunt but that kareem hunt's the other old guy piece. but that's that's for if my team is doing well right. that, that's going to help me out and if not i'll be able to package uh, him up package him up and get something for him uh because i i think that that he's a he's almost an auto draft for me a lot of the times especially if i need another running back in that 10th roundish area um but yeah, I mean, you know, you 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 started it off with saying, you know, I, I said this is a good example of, um, you know, when that when it gets tilted and it goes one way, to uh, you got to be flexible, which you do a hundred percent, but you also don't want to get bullied by the board, and you say you well, you, you were you were staunchly sticking by your guns, and it's like no, I wasn't staunchly. What do you want me to do? Like there there wasn't that many opportunities to really do anything that I would say. Yeah, I would definitely swap that around because I saw what was going on. And it's like, ah, I mean, maybe the Matt Ryan thing and then really the Mills thing. And some people would be like, I don't even want Mills. I don't mind Mills. Uh, but for the most part, like, I, I think mean, I guess you, you could you could swap Mills with golf if you really wanted to. But I mean, but for the most, you know, you get into that 12th, 13th, 14th round. I mean, who the hell knows at that point which quarterback to take? And then you're loading up on a bunch of guys and I'm missing out on. Uh, so, some some decent talent that was still hanging around that you can take stabs on where, as uh, you know, if if Mitchell doesn't pan out in Pittsburgh, if Jimmy doesn't pan out in the next, those are all dead assets, uh, you know, that nobody wants anyway. So, you know, I could have swung on those guys. Baker uh, was probably the other misstep. I should have taken Baker over Malik, but Malik, I thought Baker would make it back to me. And the thought process with Malik was that there's at least some intrigue there and he's a quarterback. So, yeah. I think you probably could have you probably could have forced it with Mac Jones there in the fifth. Mm. But at that point, how the hell would you like? I mean, it just Kirk Cousins had just come off the board. That's really it. That like, I mean, it's it's not too irregular. I guess you didn't even you didn't even that. have it. You didn't have a chance at Mac Jones in the fifth. No and, uh, yeah, and I didn't even have a chance at him. So yeah, Meh. yeah. <laughs> Is All right, Tann Tannehill in the sixth. Like, no. I mean, mm -mm. didn't. I don't, I'm not even mad at you for taking Schultz over Ryan. So I mean. Yeah, because Ryan feels like a two-year asset at best. Right. In in the now, in, you say in the middle of the season, maybe I would trade. You know, try to package something up with, you know, I, I dare D Dotson to get Matt Ryan because I need the second quarterback and everything. You know, maybe maybe somebody down a little lower is really slapping for me, like a Mechie or a or a you know, Mac or somebody, and you know, I got a pretty good roster with some depth maybe i would i would make that move but for the most part i'd say no yeah i mean we were really high on dotson so it's really hard to say that you you know you can't trade you can't trade matt ryan for where you have to take Jahan dotson in a startup so i mean you or in, in a rookie to. draft i mean you know you, you, you might can't, be able you're to. not you're not going to get a 110 or 2 1 for matt ryan in superflex i don't maybe a 2 I don't 1 think so i don't know I don't. if anything with the 1 in it but i mean maybe some people still would i don't know I can't. He's just. He's like thirty-eight years old. How? How? No one's gonna do that. No one likes yeah. Matt Ryan. I think he's a good asset if you have him, but you know, he's not really. Yeah, and I, like again, when Matt Ryan falls another round or two, probably. Let's go. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, I think we uh, we went a little longer than we wanted to here, but uh, yeah. Well, lot lot happens. lot of lot of QB strategy here to talk through, and 
Got to stay nimble and also stick to your guns a little bit. Well, you know, don't get pigeonholed. I, I got pigeonholed there in the third and forced the issue so that I didn't have to do it the rest of the draft and then still got the guy in the fourth round that I was going to take yeah, over Derek worked. Carr. And so I was like, this is fucking fantastic. Might have been all so, your fault, but. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate y'all joining us. Uh, if you, you know, definitely go to the podcast, hit a five star review on the Spotify or iTunes. That'd be that'd be a huge help, an easy way to just help us out. If you want to throw us uh, some cash over on the Patreon to get into these mocks, to to get your mock analyzed, to to talk, chat it up in the Discord, uh, as well as some extra content, we're going to try and work on getting some more of that out there. We're not advertising like an extra show a week or anything like that, but we are trying to hit them with with a little extra content. And then go over to RevelryBrewingCo.com, cop the T-shirt. This is worth the money here. It feels good. It looks cool. It's going to last forever. I've had this thing since we started this podcast five like years. Any ago. other shirt that you would buy anyway. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's better. So so soft and smooth. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Well, we appreciate y'all. We'll catch you soon with some more Dan- Dynasty Fantasy Football for your pleasure. Peace. <laughs>